Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Viking Warrior, and welcome to hopefully the first episode of How to Mod. As you can see, Daedalus is firing the How to Mod beam. Here's the folder that I'm going to be using, and here's some of my programs that I use for my modding purposes. As you can see, we have Notepad++, which is uh, just a basic coder. As you can see, I've also got some of my uh, some of the things that I've been editing on here. Now, since of a Solar Empire dev. Uh, I advise if you're doing a lot of editing, just putting a shortcut to it on your uh, fold on your desktop, because otherwise you've got to come into the, in my case, Steam library every time to come all the way down to here to find the dev exe. Whereas if you're doing lots of changes in a short period of time, it's just so much easier to have that there. And Audacity for sound the thing that comes out of your mouth when you speak unless you're a mute didn't think of that one so the first thing I'm gonna show you and go over this is a basics so I'm gonna basically go over the base standard template for an entity file in sins so for this purpose we're going to use the uh, most famous ship from the Stargate universe the BC-304 because for those of you who don't know I am a coder and the community manager of the SGI Stargate Invasion mod for Sons of a Solar Empire so what we're looking at here is a basic layout this is a very this is the base template layout for all of your ship entity files. So let's start from the top. So text, that's quite obvious, that's text, it's saying it's in text format. Entity type, now there are multiple entity types from bases to even planets, star bases, etc. So the BC-304 is a heavy cruiser, so it's designated as a frigate, meaning it's constructed from the frigate shipyard. Uh, default auto attack range is set to gravity well. That means anything, it automatically will be set to attack anything that enters the gravity well that it's in. And then obviously just below that we have default auto attack on true. So, from the moment it's constructed, default auto attack will be on. Prefers to focus fire, true. That means, basically, it prefers to fire all of its guns at one target rather than multiple. I mean, it can, if we uh, find it down here later on, later on in this uh, file, it can fire at multiple targets at once. It doesn't have to fire at a singular target. But it prefers to. Uses fighter attack. False. Now, this is very rarely used in Sins modding, as far as I can tell. From all the mods that I've uh, played and seen, fighter attack is very rarely used, as it's more of a primarily carrier ability. So basically, it has it's for ships with a huge fighter complement and point defences, so a carrier class. However, most ships don't specifically use fighters to attack. They will use their point defences or even their guns. So moving on, auto join fleet default true. That basically means if you jump into a gravity well, up here, gravity well, that has already got a fleet that you have created in it then on jumping into the gravity well the BC-304 will join that fleet automatically meaning you don't have to keep clicking join every five seconds can bomb false that's quite uh, self-explanatory can it bomb planets? no 
Type count, now that's more of a squadron thing. So in this case, type count one. You click it once, you build one BC-304. Frigate roll type. Now you have two for frigate rolls, I do believe. I could be wrong. I haven't looked at some of the other ones. But you have light and heavy. Heavy tends to be in the cruiser department, as you can see up here. And light is frigates. In terms of in-game building and where the icons sit. Stat count type is for frigate heavy. That is a base stat count, which you can then look for that stat count and edit it to how you want it to be. Moving on, the main view icon. So if you've got sins up and you've got your HUD and your interface and that, there's a picture in the middle between your normally between your like um, diplomacy alerts and military alerts and between your construction and ship abilities that is what is defined by this this is a file in our mod that makes that main view icon in the middle there a human cruiser BC-304. Actually, what I'm going to do is... Okay, so now what I've done is I have gone in and got a picture off of the game to show this off. So, the main view icon would be... Assuming... Well, the main view icon is this down here in the very middle of the screen at the bottom. As you can see you've got your statistics of the ship itself, in this case the Daedalus or the BC-304. Uh, your alerts on the left hand side and ship abilities and commands on the right. So that's what the main view icon dictates. It dictates this box here in the very middle. Can I make this... Uh, apparently not. Uh, oh god, what have I done? No, that's not working. Never mind. We will just reopen the file. Uh, screenshot. What I will do is I will move it off screen for now. Onto my second screen. <coughs> Next is the picture, the BC-304. Now, this one not so easy to show, as it's not this main icon here. Nor is it the iconography up here in this corner here. It is actually the picture that appears on the construction when you click it. So, that would require another screenshot. However, in this area, when you click on your planet, around here and here, where these two are, you tend to end up with frigates and cruisers. If you click on the cruiser one, and it opens up, you then have a list along here of all the ships. It's the picture that is signifying which one is the BC-304 from the iconography alone. So. Name string ID. This is where we get confusing. The name string ID is what gives the ship its name in the files. Now, this is basic to add. You simply open name string ID, type in that, and if it's already in there, it'll find it, and then it's got a value below that which you can edit. I believe I have got a string file around here somewhere that I was working on. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll just open the one from uh, the one from here. So I can display to you what a string file looks like. This is a string file. 
as you can see, it is a lot of lines of text. There are 600 and, you know, 6,972 strings in this string file alone. Now that covers both IDS name and IDS description. So let's find the BC304, shall we? So we just copy this, control F, paste it in with control V, find next, there we go, and there it is. And right here is where it is. And you can see the ID, string info, ID, IDS Human Cruiser Heavy BC304 name, which links up with the name string in its actual file. And then below the value, the BC304. And then below that, you have the IDS Human Cruiser Heavy BC304 description, which, as you can see, just below that in the string file, we have that one as well, the description. And the value, a heavily armoured warship equipped with punishing close-range weapons. And this appears in the game. If, it, if you haven't got a string name given to it, then when you hover over it, rather than giving it its name and description, it will come up with string not found. Now remember, when editing strings, you must always keep this number correct. If you don't, it will start to cut off ones from the bottom every time you add a new one. So say I added four more and didn't update the string number. These four would get cut off from the bottom and it would come up in the developer file, in developer dev, with a little pop-up window in the top corner, top left-hand corner of the screen, saying string info missing, IDS random event resource boom, boom name. And then you'd skip that and it would come up with open rebellion missing and so on and so forth. And this can get very irritating if you are developing. So you've always got to be careful about making sure that this string number, number of strings, is precise. Because if you don't, it's going to irritate the hell out of you and you may end up losing some strings. So that's the strings covered. Obviously there's the counter description ID, which currently for ours I believe is the base counter description for all frigates. Yes. Here it is. This is put in the base game, these, the counter descriptions for the basic roles. So, as you can see here, you've got this helps sum it up. You've got IDS counter description frigate anti fighter. So, you've got anti fighter frigates, anti module frigates, light frigates, long range frigates, heavy frigates, and non combat frigates. And then you move on to corvettes and fighters, etc, etc. Basically, putting this in means if your string is not detected, if this string was not detected, it would then replace the string description to this. It's just to cover yourself, but it can get a bit confusing if you uh, obviously don't know what you're looking for. So you've always got to be careful. Now moving on, base price. So this is just telling you the price of how much each one costs. You can obviously just change it, so if I do that, it now costs 50 credits to build. Let's put it back, and you can make things free to build. So you just get rid of all of those and make them all zero. So it is free to build. Slot count is how many fleet supply it takes up to actually construct a ship of this class. So in this case, 17 fleet supply is what's required to make the ship. And that then takes off of your fleet supply how many ships you can construct. 
Build time is quite obvious, that's 45 seconds there for build time. Has levels Fox. Most cruisers or most frigates or things that come under the frigate range do not have levels. The only things that tend to have levels is capital ships. Experience points for destroying, 10. Now, you might be wondering, experience points? Why on earth for destroying the ship, 10 experience points? This line of code here is just explaining to you and explaining to the game that when this ship is destroyed by a capital ship, they gain 10 XP. Because obviously, frigates don't have levels, so XP for them is wasted. Moving on, max hull points, 1450. Now this is unupgraded 1450. So obviously, we would have another entity file, a research entity file, that would boost all frigates by 5% in hull. So that would then go bigger. We also have max shield points, same thing, an entity file for the research of shields to make this better. Hull point restore rate. Now this is 1.45 hull per second, which may not seem like a lot, but for a ship with, uh, well it's exactly 1% of the uh, max hull points. So if you brought this down to one hill point this restore rate would take 99 seconds to bring it back up to full health same with the shield restore rate that would take 99 seconds to bring this back up to full shields now 99 seconds is what 1 minute 39 so it's not too long obviously you get titans and things like this that have much more shields they have more like that much shield and as such you simply just do that so now this would take 99 seconds assuming you want it to to refresh the shields back to full now obviously you can play around with these for your own mods as much as you like if you feel like the credits for a BC 304 should be 6,500 you can do that and that will translate over into the game now moving on we have base armor points now this gives it five five pieces of armor five points of armor and basically that just adds to the defense of the vessel it uh, as far as I can tell, it's similar to damage reduction in Fallout. This 5 is 5% 5 of all incoming damage is reduced. Now that may not seem like a lot, but when you've got a ship doing 100 average damage to your ship and 5% of that is being with taken off, then that ship's only doing 95% damage to you which is not a lot but it adds up max mitigation now this is actually for shields this is max though max mitigation meaning you can set it to be either 100 so it can mitigate all damage and is basically invincible when fully upgraded or if you want you can set it to 20 so it can only max out at 20 mitigation so it it will stop and you can only max out 20% mitigation now obviously if you just leave it at zero it uh, doesn't worry about it because you can't have a 0% mitigation since ships must always be able to mitigate something and as they start with some form of mitigation, leaving it at zero means that the max mitigation is completely ignored. Now prerequisites, that's quite clear. Prerequisites in this case 
sometimes it needs another ship to be built like an F302 in this example or a fighter would require something with carrier capabilities or a hangar defense station or a space station before it could be built in this case it is just one research the research prerequisite is the human research cruiser Daedalus which is an entity file and that basically just makes the research in the research tree appear and then that's got its own entity file explaining everything about it to the game and that then basically says that once this research entity file has been achieved this ship the BC 304 this beautiful one here is unlocked for construction and it states that it only needs to be level one for this as some things such as armor upgrades or hull upgrades have multiple tiers so you could have level one that is five percent or level one of level one that is five percent and then level two of level one that takes it up to ten percent and then level two level one being twenty percent or something such as this so this is basically just stating it just needs human research cruiser Daedalus to be active to level one and that's done it can be created then now required faction name ID obviously you can set it to be very specified on faction but for the most part you don't need to be because you will probably have another file somewhere stating all the ships that that faction is able to construct and required completed research subjects zero meaning it doesn't need multiple different researches in order to build for example it doesn't need human cruiser Daedalus 1 to be done and then it also needs four research stations to be constructed basically zero means once you've done the upgrade you've got it permanently number of random debris large number of random debris small this basically means when the ship is destroyed it drops one large random debris and ten small debris unless of course you want to go in and create your own debris for the ship when it's destroyed and number of specific debris obviously armor type very heavy so as we can see five armor points for a sins ship a cruiser that you can unlock at level one with one military research station a very heavy armor type is very impressive Ah, and now HUD icon so the HUD icon which as we can see is HUD icon human cruiser that is another entity file in itself or a texture file I believe the HUD icon basically means this icon so when you zoom out far enough to not see your emblem you see instead that sort of icon which we then have small HUD icon so obviously zooming right out you will get a very very tiny version of it and then info card icon which is this one up here this is your info card no it isn't I, I tell a lie this is the small HUD icon and when you hover over the ship a card pops up here which tells you all of the things and this is the info card icon that appears up here uh, minimum zoom distance multiplier that basically means that <clears throat> when zooming into this ship it will zoom in 1.5 times faster than normal 
Well, that's the minimum it can zoom in per like scroll of the wheel, I believe. Number of weapons three. So all ships have we know them as hard points on their decks. This ship has loads of them and without going into the mesh file I cannot show you them but there are multiple on these fins here there are multiple on the top here where the missile bays are there's multiple on this plate bit on the top there's weapons all over this ship however those hard points are dictated by the number of weapons that this ship has well I say number of weapons it's more types of weapons rather than actual weapons and this has rail guns missiles and from later upgrades Asgard beam weapons so let's start at the top weapon projectile okay so this is the rail gun attack type anti-heavy damage effects shields and hull damage apply type backloaded damage type physical so not psionic or anything like that Weapon class auto cannon. Damage per bank. Now, ships and stations that have weapons have four different banks front, back, left, right. As even though this is a 3D game, it tends to happen on a 2D plane. So, this would be front, this would be back, left, and right. There's no up or down. And so its front weapons do 40 damage, which obviously can be upgraded with another entity file going over upgrades and research for railguns. So its forward firing weapons will do 40 damage. Its rear firing weapons, because it tends to have only two railguns on the back that fire backwards do 10 damage. Left and right, because it can fire some from the front and some from the rear, do 20 damage. Now, you might be wondering, well hang on, when I've played this mod, it doesn't come up with that. It just says average damage. That's because Sins takes all four of these totals so 20, 20, that's 40, 40, 40, that's 80, 90. It takes 90. So this ship firing every single bank of its weapons at once on one target will do 90 damage. However, it doesn't say it'll do 90 damage because Sins takes that 90, divides it by 60, and then comes up with a DPS or damage per second total which it then averages per full sort of all guns firing from every bank averages that and then it tells you what the average damage is so yes okay the front bank is doing 40 damage so it does about 35 to 45, dependent on conditions and how many rounds actually hit, etc. And altogether, the ship firing all its weapons does 90 damage. However, the info card will say it will do 10 damage. Because Sins takes the pre-buff cooldown time, which is the delay between firing, the amount of total damage it does which is 90 and the amount of projectiles is fired which is six in this case it takes all of those and figures out what the DPS from all of the guns firing at once would be for this ship and it does this for all ships so for example the Azuran uh, beam orbital beam defense platform does 400 average damage. It doesn't, if we take a look in 
the file. Uh, da, 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 da. Game info. Orbital. Is there an orbital cannon? Uh, orbital weapons platform. That's a planet module. Wrong one. Orbital shield generator, repair platform, mine, jumper blocker, cannon. Orbital cannon. No, that's the AG3. That's human anyway. Uh, orbital heavy defense. Is that what we've created for the beam platform? I believe it is. Now, orbital heavy defense. No, that's the drone platform. So it would be the cannon, which would be this one yes number of weapon missile nope uh, where on earth is it weapons platform no oh there's some more down here uh, combat laboratory jumper blocker I genuinely don't know um orbital beam and all subfolders and just advanced options file contents okay what I'm gonna do instead is open this lovely little bit of text that I have called agent ransack now this is something that we use as basically I will quickly demonstrate this now tells me all the files that have starbase upgrade phase in them. So this is all of the upgrades for the phase starbase. Whether it says so on there or if it says it in the file. So orbital beam. And that's not appeared there. However, if we do this, that is a planet module orbital beam weapon. which appears to be for the Psy. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it is called Orbital, isn't it? Orbital. Ability. Uh, jumper blocker, research orbital, name, let's. I'm genuinely unsure. Uh, let's try this because we have an interesting naming convention. Here we go. Azura and Orbitals. Uh, weapons Platform Heavy Defense Orbital Cannon. This would probably be the Lagrangian satellite? Yes, this is the Lagrangian satellite. So that means Weapons Platform is no. So that means heavy defense. No, that's the... Okay, so it's weapons platform. We figured it out. So if we go down to weapons, here it is. Beam. Now, according to the game, the orbital beam only does 400 dp average damage. However, it actually turns to face and does 2,000 damage. But because it takes 2,000, 5 seconds to fire, and it lasts for 4 seconds, Sins takes that, does all the calculations in the background, and how many beams it fires at once, does all the ca calculations in the background, and comes up with an average damage over per second of 400. Because it takes four seconds to fire, and it takes five seconds to cool down, and it fires one beam, it comes up saying this beam platform does 400 average damage. It does 2,000, but of course, Sins works it out on an average basis. So. 
that is how you can that's why you get averages rather than you get for example these numbers you get an average railgun damage in this case so moving on we've got the range of how far it can shoot the pre-buff cooldown time which is the time between each round firing or each volley as it were in this case because it fires six so that's three seconds between each hard point reload uh, basically uh, can fire at fighters that's quite clearly true so it fires on fighters synchronized targeting false now we talked about that up here uh, prefers to focus fire true however synchronized targeting is false meaning it can fire on multiple ships all at once without having to fire on one at a time because as we can see in uh, for example Stargate Atlantis where the Daedalus goes toe to toe with two hive ships at the end of season 2 it was firing on both of them at the same time. Point stagger delay. I'm not entirely sure what that is. Travel speed 4000. So that's probably going to be 4000 meters a second. Assuming SINS is based on meters. As SINS seems to use an arbitrary uh, distance measuring. Which is why some of the ships don't look their real size because people have said this about Atlantis how uh, it should be bigger and this sort of thing because of it's so huge and like the Orion next to it is almost the same size but if you compare the Atlantis to the planet that it's next to it is already technically about four times the size of the original Atlantis. So Sins has this weird uh, distance measurement. Duration? In this case, no duration because they fire a physical round, a slug round, and they fire six of each round. So it's not needed for a duration. Duration is mainly there for a beam fire constraint type can always fire so sometimes it can be can only fire in one direction etc weapon effects weapon type projectile so it's a slug round we fire six of those there is a 0.5 second delay between each round firing so it doesn't just fire all six at once because that would be very bizarre there's no delay between the ship being told to fire and it actually firing. Uh, it's We're now on to the actual effects. So this is particle and sound effects. Muzzle effect name. Weapon tech capital laser muzzle. So this is when the ship fires, the muzzle flash that you see is of currently the tech capital laser firing. Eventually this will be changed to BC-304 railgun firing or weapon towery, probably weapon towery railgun muzzle. But at the moment we are still working on those sorts of things. Now muzzle sound effect min respawn time. So every 0.5 seconds the sound effect which is down here will respawn weapon tech capital autocannon heavy underscore muzzle so these are the sounds specifically for this for the weapon tech capital laser muzzle these three sounds are specifically in there for this type of muzzle effect and obviously just like the strings sound count three if you had sound count one these two would get cut off and it's also quite possible that it would screw with the entire file 
and then it would class all of this below that as null and void. Just typing. Hit effect name. Now this is the effect of this weapon or in this case this weapon hitting shields hull plating that sort of thing normally hull as we can see here hit hull effect sounds so this is the weapon impact physical heavy hit hull so this is the sound effect for the rounds impacting on hull plating not shields and then below that we have shields once again one if you don't have it it goes a bit funky we have a term in sims modding in sims modding called because sins because sins does what it wants and we just have to get on with it so obviously shields as well projectile travel effect is the noise that it makes when it travels so it could be a or it could be a that's the sound that it's making while it's traveling from where it's been fired to the target then moving on we have another weapon in this case the missiles so it targets capital ships it affects shields and hulls it's backloaded it's a slug and it's the weapon class of missiles and once again we have numbers that don't add up to the numbers that uh, well they don't link up to the numbers that are in the you see in the game but once again these are the actual damage outputs not the average now these have a longer range than obviously the uh, as you can see up here they have a slightly longer range we'll say 500 meters longer range than the rail guns they take 10 seconds before they can fire again they can't fire at fighters they don't have to synchronize their targets so they can fire in multiple directions at once they are much slower traveling than the rail guns they don't have a duration because they're not a beam weapon they can always fire it fires three missiles at once with a 0.5 second delay between missiles being launched and obviously we are back down to the sound you've got the muzzle particles the sounds the muzzle part and the particle and the sounds so it's all here now we're on to what we are calling asgard beam weapons however these are just basic beams energy beams from inside the sins engine they do 1250 damage now once again this is not the number that you see in sins they have a longer range than the missiles and rail guns they take 10 seconds to fire they can't target fighters they don't have to synchronize point stagger delay is a number but i'm not sure what it does they fire for 1.8 seconds so you can see it's a beam weapon and that duration has come into effect now the fire constraint type whereas these ones were can always fire this one is research and then we've got research prerequisite number of research prerequisites one subject human research ability asgard beams so this one this beam weapon will not fire until the entity file that controls the asgard beams research ability has been activated and completed obviously only needs one level of that required faction name id not required and the weapon effects now that this is in there to just teach sin to tell sins that it can't fire until this research has been completed but technically they're always there they just are unable to fire in sins until we've completed this research the weapon effect is beam it fires once it doesn't need a burst delay because it's only firing one there's no fire delay and then obviously we are on to the sounds and the effects 
So here we have the effect name, which is our Psi Beam, which is what we use. It takes 1.3 seconds to respawn the sound effect. The sounds are Weapon Asgard Beam's Muzzle. The hit effect name is Hitting on Hull, but as we don't have those sounds in place, these should all be zero theoretically, but because we have a sound, the sound count is one, but there's nothing in here. Now you want to do this if you want to keep it blank, because hitting the hull sound effect, sins must always have at least one sound in each of these, or it won't work. However, if you want to keep it quiet and empty, you simply remove what's in the speech marks and do it like that. Because this is what dictates the amount of sounds there are. Does, and this is what dictates what the sound is. So if you were to remove that, sins would have a fit. But if it's still there, it doesn't have to have a sound in, as long as it registers that there is a sound there, the sound fold, the sound code is there. There's just nothing in there in the moment. And obviously, because it's a beam, we have beam texture name. So this is the beam. The core of the beam, because this is the glow. So the glow around the actual beam. And this is the cork uh, texture of it. The beam width, in this case, well, I'm going to assume that's 20 meters but it could be something else. And then the colour. Now the colour is done in its hex colour, I think. I think it's called hex colour. And it gives it the F format. And beam tiling rate is 3. I'm not sure what that's for. <laughs> And now weapon index for range is zero. Firing alignment type is default. Target count per bank, so it can only fire at one target from each bank. Can only target structures. If you want a super weapon that targets only the buildings, this is what you want. Just true. Has weapon levels. False because only titans have weapon levels which is where you upgrade the ship itself to have better weapons or better shields rather than using a research the mass is I'm gonna say 4,000 tons but Sins does what it wants the shields are custom textures that we have put in well they're not textures, they're sort of particles, sort of meshes. They're, uh, it's complicated. I leave that one to dot. Uh, this is the name of it, and this is the file that it's linked to. Render the shields, true. So you can have it as false, so they just, the weapons impact just short of the hull, but you don't see the effect on the shield. And then you've got the acceleration, so 100 meters per second acceleration, I'm going to say. Could be right, could be wrong. Sins does what it wants. Strafing, so left and right. Linear is deceleration, so that's forward and backwards. How quickly can it stop? I got a bloody delivery of my uh, Battlestar Galactica Blu-ray box set that I've been waiting for for two months. Yay! Worst time, of course. Uh, where was I? Max acceleration is forward and backwards. How quickly it can do that? I want to say 100 meters per second. Don't really know. It's a arbitrary unit of measurement. Strafing, left and right. Linear deceleration, so stopping. Max acceleration on Anglia. Ang Angular. I live in Anglia. I don't live in Angular. So, how much can it f accelerate 
to the left or right so uh, diagonally basically can it accelerate diagonally as fast as it can just straight forward and turning max speed linear so the maximum it reaches is 500 meters per second I suppose so within five seconds of it accelerating straight ahead it will reach its max speed and max roll rate is how far it will turn the ship will roll itself in order to turn to travel in a certain distance and obviously max roll angle 45 degrees so how quickly it turns and the maximum that it'll turn to and then we've got because this has carrier capabilities we've got the F302 squadron here and they don't cost antimatter and the human fighter squadron F312 which is the heavy version number of command points so how many fighters can it summon in this case two and then we're on to the sounds so number of sounds attack ordered blah blah blah, blah. and phase jump currently still tech heavy need to get those done and then we're on to what actually makes the ship look like the ship which is the mesh info so the mesh name is human cruiser bc304 and if we go into our mesh file uh, meshes and look for human underscore cruiser heavy bc304 there we go there's the dot mesh file that links into this to make it look like this but that's just the shape and then obviously you've got things like uh, exhaust particle systems exhaust frigate tech heavy so that makes the engines glow this hasn't been done custom as of yet but it will be on our list to do hyperspace charge up and travel are sound IDs so the actual sound it makes when it's charging up its hyperdrive and when it jumps into hyperdrive and is traveling through hyperdrive uh, hyperspace rather than the well when you jump to hyperspace and they say things like prepare for phase jump that's this file this sound file is the one that dictates that this is the sound file it makes when it's going that's that sound file and then obviously the engine sound ID which will hopefully if I can find a decent source will be made into the Daedalus sound file and then you've got its ability slots what abilities it has it has in total five ability slots one two three four five now this fifth one isn't used on capital ships because they have levels so you click that and it opens up levels so they can upgrade to have Asgard beam weapons and such however if you put something on ability 4 slot which is this one in developer mode the game has a little bit of a fit because you're not supposed to use that one so as we can see here ability 1 mini nuke which is that one which is obviously a separate, en a separate entity file to give it its um, to give it its uh, picture and its attributes. So nuke and so on and so forth. Battle systems, which is there again, separate entity file, and same with Asgard Pulse. Max antimatter, as you can see, one hundred and fifty. 150. That replenishes at one antimatter a second. Cargo type invalid because you can have trade cargo or refinery cargo. Max capacity zero. Formation rank is for squadrons of ships, and as we only build one, it's not required. The shadow is. I believe the shadow is. Um, how much of a shadow it casts on other ships but I'm unsure on that and then allegiance decrease per round trip so if that was for example 50 if you jumped to another system and then back to earth 
this would become 50% more likely to rebel. So that is the BC-304. This is a base template, I would say, for the Sins Entity Files. And why would I say that? Don't save, because otherwise I'll just screw things up. Because this is the frigate from... Uh, this is the Sabre from Star Trek Armada 3. This means nothing. Three lines of code, it means absolutely nothing to us, but to Sins, it makes perfect sense. And as a result, if I look, this is a three kilobyte file, this is an eight kilobyte file. This may still say dot entity, just like the BC-304. However, it's been binned, and what that means is it's been transferred into binary. So it, obviously, makes the file size much smaller, but SINs can read every single thing that we put in this slot. And I can prove this, because I've got the converted file up here, and here we are. Pretty much, obviously, a more complete and up-to-date version, and in full version, but pretty much an identical layout. So you see, cam bomb, false, type count, one, frigate roll, light frigate, the icon, so on, how much it costs, experience for destroying, its maximum hull and shield and such, what prerequisites it has, if any, the amount of debris, then weapons. This is a basic layout. And even, here we go. This is an entity file from the Sins game itself. This is for the Tech Scout. This is the Tech Scout in the game, in the base game, no mods. So this is the base template for all of your ship entity files. As you can see, it's all there. This is the base template. But obviously, the tech scout doesn't look like this. No. Let's go and have a look at what the tech scout looks like, shall we? Tech. Working on it. There's thousands of files in here. Having a look at what the tech scout actually looks like will certainly help make things a little bit clearer because the tech scout does not look like the file I just showed you. This is not the tech scout. Wait, I know how I can do this much easier. Uh, there it is. And then, oh no, because that's the converted file. Never mind. Basically, you will go into your Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion file. In my case, it's in Steam Library. Same place you get the Sins dev. And you will find, not in a folder called convert data, because I made this, convert data underscore rebellion dot exe. Now you run this, and nothing happens. However, these are both the same. However, if I run this, command batch file, it crashes, which is fine it's crashed. However, ta-da, they all look, apart from that one maybe, they look like that original Sabre entity because this has been changed into binary format. Now you can look through all this if you want, but this means nothing to us as coders. So this is uh, capital laser muzzle. That's the sound effect or the particle, right? Weapon capital muzzle. I can link that to a file. That's a file that makes sense to me. The weapon tech capital laser light muzzle. But the rest of this, I don't know how I can implement this as a file, as a ship. 
but Sins does. And so you get this base format, and then you convert it into this, which makes the file much smaller, but Sins still understands it as if it's written like this. This is for us to read and edit, and this is for Sins to read and make happen. Now, for this, you're going to need the convert data data underscore rebellion dot exe and these two files. Now, the convert link, no, ignore that, because that's got to go. Uh, the these two you can get from a download, which just allows things, for example, this to become this, and vice versa. Meaning you can then bring these files in, edit them how you want them, then make them smaller so that Sins can understand them and your mod is not taking up so much space. I mean, let me try and find the Frigate Scout entity. If I just copy that name, go back to Sins of Solar Empire, Game Info, Search. And you may have seen the Galaxy Forge and the Particle Forge. Uh, we will go over those in more depth later on. Because this video has been ridiculously long as it is. Because of interruptions and such. And I think my voice will die if I do any more. So, let's let it search. And this if you're using Windows 10 or I believe Windows 8 and probably Windows 7 this search bar when you get more than a thousand files in here is going to be your saving grace there it is and this is the entity file straight out of game info and it looks like a bin file but obviously I took that and I converted it using that and now it makes sense to me but that's not to say that this doesn't make sense. This makes sense to Sins. Means bugger all to me, but it makes sense to Sins. Now there will be a link in the description that will allow you to download these two, which will make things a little bit easier and you can obviously have a play around.